So you've already got last year's Galaxy S23 Ultra stashed in your pants or bag or wherever you shove the thing. But because you're proper flush, you're seriously considering an upgrade to this year's S24 Ultra. But is the fresh Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra actually worth the 1249 pound asking price? Will you actually notice any real difference in the camera tech, the gaming experience, all those bits that really matter? Well, I've had the Galaxy S24 Ultra for a good few days now, so here's what I think of it so far and how it stacks up against last year's almighty flagship. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! Now first up, if you slap the Galaxy S23 Ultra side by side with the fresh new S24 Ultra, I'd imagine most people would really struggle to tell the difference between them. Because Sammy's latest blow more or less identical dimensions and only a few little subtle design tweaks. One of the most obvious differences is now the display on the S24 Ultra is completely flat, whereas there was an ever so slight curvature here on the S23 Ultra. Those edges did slope away a wee bit. And the main difference I've noticed is that in apps like Deezer, where there's a scrolly bar thing on the right hand side, nice and easy to use now on the S24 Ultra, whereas it was always a bit of a ball lick on the S23 Ultra, sometimes took multiple attempts to actually grab the thing. But thankfully, no added girth here on the S24 Ultra as a result. Still got gently sloped edges, which are quite comfortable to clutch, but unfortunately the same sharp corners, proper palm porkers they are, really jut into your hand when you are using them with just the one mitt. The S24 Ultra has slightly skinnier bezels down below as well, but it's, it's pretty subtle. And Samsung has also changed up the frame for the Ultra model, so no longer do you have the shiny glossy aluminium frame of last year's S23 Ultra. The S24 Ultra now sports a matte titanium frame. This doesn't get as smudgy and greasy as the older model, thankfully. Resists those fingerprints and other grime. And titanium is also supposed to be more durable than the old armor aluminium. Although to be fair, that S23 Ultra's frame still looking in pretty good nick, considering I've been banging it about for the best part of a year. And the newer phone also technically a wee bit lighter thanks to that titanium frame, although it's still a bit of a heifer at 230 grams. So in a blind test where I pick them both up and I try and work out which is which based on just the weight, I'm honestly guessing every time. And as for the arse end, well, apart from the fresh new colour options, there's bugger all difference between the S23 Ultra and S24 Ultra. You've got the exact same slightly jutting camera lenses, which means that when these phones are sat on a desk or table, they do rattle about the place. As for the general hardiness, well, they're both IP68 water and dust resistant, so you can drop them in a sink or a bath or whatever, they'll be absolutely fine. Just give them a quick toweling off. And that front display has been upgraded as well from Gorilla Glass Victus 2 here on the S23 Ultra to the fresh new Gorilla Glass Armor here on the S24 Ultra. Apparently, this is less susceptible to scratching than the old Victus 2, which is good news because the S23 Ultra is coated in tiny wee nicks. Could be a lot worse again because I've absolutely punished this thing the last few months, but still. But the major difference I've noticed so far between the two is that Gorilla Glass armor is a lot less reflective, as you can see there. Despite having the same massive spotlight beamed right onto it, you can barely even see it here on the S24 Ultra. So between that and the fact that it's a brighter display, it's much, much easier to see what is going on on the S24 Ultra if you're using it outdoors and the sun shining. So here in the UK, that'll come in handy in about six months time. And hidden away beneath each of these almighty screens is the same ultrasonic fingerprint sensor, just as responsive and reliable as always. And that's also backed up by a good bit of face and lock action. As far as the software goes, well, it's the fresh new One UI 6.1 launcher here on the S24 Ultra. Of course, that should be getting beamed to the S23 Ultra imminently, if you haven't had that already. So why uh, the software experience should be identical on these pricey blows, including the usual plethora of Samsung's apps and services. Personally, I find it kind of irritating that you've got two web browsers, two calendars, two wallets, two sodden assistants, of course. Because, oh yes, Bigsby is back. Bigsby! And yes, the S24 Ultra is packed to the tits with various AI features, which you may have heard Samsung bang on about a bit. But don't think you'll be missing out with the S23 Ultra because those features are coming across to the older phone in an upgrade. And yeah, you got the exact same S Pen related shenanigans on the S24 Ultra and the S23 Ultra. The stylus itself hasn't changed up at all, same dimensions, weight, etc. I'll have the exact same features and functionality once they're both on the same version of One UI. 
However, one major difference between this pricey pair is the level of software support that Samsung has offered because they've committed to seven full years of OS updates and security patching here for the fresh new Galaxy S24 Ultra. Whereas with the older S23 Ultra, it's just four more years of security and OS updates. Of course, the way that everything's going right now, I wouldn't be surprised if by 2030, we're all living in underground caves, licking the walls for sustenance, but maybe that's just me. Oh, and it's the same storage situation on the S23 and S24 Ultra. 256 gigs of storage space as base. You can boost that to 512 gigs or an almighty terabyte if you've got a bit more cash to stuff inside of Samsung's metaphorical G-string. So let's have a bit of a shifty at the display tech and we're talking yet another massive 6.8 inch AMOLED panel slapped here on the S24 Ultra. Same as last year, it's once again a 1440p screen, so we're talking pin sharp eye candy despite the fact it is a spacious display. And Dolby Vision support once again missing in action, but you do have full HDR10 streaming support instead. And on the default display settings, you can certainly expect vivid, vibrant visuals, but you can calm down those colours a bit if you'd prefer. And according to Samsung, the Galaxy S24 Ultra's display is even brighter now, although to be fair, the S23 Ultra was already brighter than the bloody sun. I can't really see any actual improvement with my admittedly wrecked eyeballs, but the S24 Ultra's anti-reflective finish does certainly improve that visibility. And of course, we're talking LTPO tech here with a refresh rate scale and all the way up from 1 to 120 hertz, depending on what you're up to. And no change either for the dinky selfie cam sphincter. It barely intrudes at all when you go full screen, even though it is centrally positioned. And naturally, yes, the S24 Ultra once again has a beefy stereo speaker setup, same as the S23 Ultra. Let's just test them side by side so you can see the results. So first, the S23 Ultra. 24 hour review with his absolute monolith. And I'll slap my sim in there for an in-depth review next week. And now the S24 Ultra. Apologies about the temporary studio setup, by the way. I'm actually still in San Jose. It's only about an hour since Unpacked finished. Legged it right here from the conference center. Bloody knackered I am. So yeah, as before, proper bloody loud, but the clarity is still decent on that top volume. I honestly can't notice the difference between the two when I pump them all the way up. And if you jump on into those audio settings, you'll see there's bugger all difference. You've once again got that Dolby Atmos support, including Dolby Atmos for gaming. And you do have an equalizer if you want to tinker around with the audio output yourself. Now on the performance side of things, pretty straightforward upgrade for the S24 Ultra, which is powered by Qualcomm's latest, freshest, beefiest Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, compared with the older 8 Gen 2, which is stuffed inside of the S23 Ultra. And if you're a fan of the benchmarks, well, as you can see there, 8 Gen 3, big step up in terms of the multi-core processing. So it should theoretically be better for those more complex tasks or simply running lots of apps at the same time. I've got to say, though, the overall experience on the older S23 Ultra is still perfectly fluid. So no real noticeable difference in the everyday experience between the S23 and the S24. And certainly so far in the first few days gaming with the Galaxy S24 Ultra, I haven't noticed any real step up there either. The likes of Genshin Impact, for instance, can still run on the highest graphic settings with generally a stable frame rate, although there is the occasional wee judder here and there, which I was not expecting. And it's probably not helped along by the fact that the S24 Ultra does get rather toasty under a lot of pressure. So when you've been gaming, even for just 15 to 20 minutes, it does get quite warm to the touch. And that is despite Samsung saying they've bunged an even larger vapor chamber in the S24 Ultra. And if you have a squint in the lab section of Game Booster settings, there is an alternate game performance management option in here, which I've tried turning on and it doesn't really seem to make any difference. But you know, I've still really enjoyed Genshin Impact in here on the S24 Ultra, despite these minor blips in the frame rate. And you know, it could just be early jitters because I've only been testing out the S24 Ultra for just under a week now. I will continue to test the game and ahead of my in-depth review, hopefully give you an update for that. And yeah, and as for the actual game and mode as well, well that hasn't really improved at all, unfortunately, for the latest version of One UI. Still pretty basic stuff compared with a lot of rivals. And of course, one of the absolute highlights of the older S23 Ultra was the astounding battery life. The thing was like Michael Piss in Myers, it just would not die. And good news is S24 Ultra does not disappoint on that front. You've got the same capacity battery, 5,000 milliamp hours. 
And even with extensive play on these things, you won't kill them dead in a single day unless you really, really try very bloody hard. I'm talking hours and hours of screen on time, even with plenty of camera action, good bit of game and all that good stuff. And I did a proper side-by-side -side battery test as well, just streaming video non-stop on these things from a 100% charge. And the Galaxy S23 Ultra did die slightly earlier than the S24 Ultra, but both survived for over 16 hours. So good news if you go on a lot of long-haul flights. Sadly, however, Samsung hasn't bothered to improve the charging speeds at all, so they both top off at 45 watt wired charging or 15 watt wireless charging. If you're charging them wirelessly, you'll definitely want to do that overnight because it takes bloody hours. Now, last year's S23 Ultra introduced a fresh new 200 meg adaptive pixel HP2 camera, and Samsung has decided to stick with that 200 meg sensor on this year's model. Now, by default, both the S23 Ultra and the S24 Ultra use 16-in-1 pixel binning, capturing 12-megapixel images. Although you can boost this resolution to 50 meg or the full 200 meg if you so desire. Likewise, you've got Samsung's Scene Optimizer slapped on both of these smartphones, although I prefer to leave this knocked off because it does tend to artificially boost colors and make things look a bit less natural than they actually do in real life. I've certainly found that the S24 Ultra is more capable overall compared with the S23 Ultra. Less saturation in those test shots when the almighty blowers are confronted with strong contrast. You get sharper results in those lighter areas, although the trade-off is that the darker areas lose some of the finer detail you will see in the S23 Ultra pics. But certainly more natural looking images with the S24 Ultra. And there's a clear improvement in the evenings, at least quite a lot of the time. The S24 Ultra once again captures more realistic images with sharper detail compared with the older flagship. You've got less noise to contend with, making things murkier when the lighting is cack. And tones and textures are more accurately captured. Although in some of my sample shots, the differences aren't quite as obvious and the S23 Ultra performs almost as strongly. You do still get some noise and softer results when you're shooting in ambient indoor lighting, but the S24 Ultra is on the whole a dependable shooter and seems to be a gentle step up in most areas for everyday shots. And as for the portrait mode, as you can see, you've now got more zoom options here on the S24 Ultra, one times, two times, three times, or five times. If you want to get nice and close to your subject, whereas you're stuck with one times or three times here on the older S23 Ultra. And for some reason, the food mode seems to shit its pants every time here on the Galaxy S24 Ultra. So you get much better results with the older flagship. Hopefully that's just some weird early bug. I'm not really sure what's going on there. Now with the old Galaxy S23 Ultra, you got a pair of telephoto shooters, both 10 megapixels. One working at 3 times optical zoom, one offering 10 times optical zoom. The S24 Ultra swaps out that 10x zoom lens for a 50 megapixel shooter, this time with a reduced 5x optical zoom. And this does offer a clear improvement in image clarity when you're zooming between the 5 and 10 times levels compared with the older Ultra, while the focus can now cope with closer subjects if you want to pick up those finer details. At the 10 times zoom level and beyond, the old S23 Ultra does often come out on top, offering slightly stronger clarity. Although in most of my test shots, there's really not a huge amount in it. And both of these phones can zoom right into the 100 times zoom level, which frankly is more than you should ever need. And things do unsurprisingly start to get a bit fuzzy when you are hitting those kinds of levels. And again, the telephoto results are a step up on the Galaxy S24 Ultra in lower light conditions. You've generally got less noise, the details are a wee bit sharper, and colours are closer to what you'll see with the naked eye. Results with the 12 megapixel ultra wide angle shooters slapped on both the S23 Ultra and S24 Ultra, absolutely fine. Not quite as capable in darker conditions, however, especially if there's any kind of motion. And if you happen to catch my S24 Ultra unboxing video, you'll know that there's lots of really clever ass AI photo editing tools to piddle about with. Spruce up your pics, make them look even more gorgeous. The good news is those are all coming to the S23 Ultra as well, so you're not missing out. And if you want to shoot some home movies, well, the good news is you can capture footage all the way up to 8K resolution once again at 30 frames per second. Otherwise, if you bump it down to Ultra HD, you've got a choice of 30 or 60 frames per second. And we're once again talking cracking picture quality here on the S24 Ultra. And that stabilization is, again, tastefully smooth, even when you're wandering about all over the place panning the camera. 
Like the previous generation, you could smoothly zoom in and out while filming without a jarring transition between the lenses, though as usual that ultra-wide angle shooter isn't as capable for video capture. You got a little bit less noise at night when you're zooming in with those telephoto shooters, though it's not usually much of a difference. Both of these Samsung blowers do a solid job in the evenings. And on the audio side of things, the S24 Ultra is once again a star, just like that S23 Ultra. Wind interference is dampened down so you can clearly pick up vocals when you're shooting outdoors. So even a blustery boat trip in San Francisco was handled deftly by this mighty flagship. And last of both of these Samsung Ultras serve up the same 12 megapixel selfie camera, so no real difference between the two. You got the same craggy faced miserable git with both. And there you have it my lovelies, that in a tasty wee nutshell is how the fresh new Galaxy S24 Ultra stacks up against the older but still pretty bloody expensive S23 Ultra. Now, I'm definitely loving the S24 Ultra so far, five days in. I'm going to be using it as my full-time phone for at least another week or so before I deliver my in-depth review however because I feel like the game and performance isn't quite there just yet. Hopefully it'll settle down and that will improve over time. But so far everything else is excellent, the camera's certainly an improvement over the previous year. Battery life is once again excellent, the media chops are top notch. Loving that anti-reflective display as well, but if you've already got the older S23 Ultra, I would certainly say an upgrade to the S24 Ultra, not exactly essential, especially given the kind of money that we're talking here. Unless obviously you wipe your ass with £50 notes, in which case, yeah, go for it. I mean, I've never actually even seen a £50 note. Anyhow, that's what I reckon, but what do you guys think of the S24 Ultra? And if you've got the S23 Ultra, are you tempted to upgrade? Maybe you've already got your pre-order in. Be great to your thoughts down in the comments below. Please do plug subscribe, ding that notifications bell, all the usual YouTube guff, and have yourselves a bloody wonderful rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.